Hi everyone, my name is Danny. I'm your ecology TA for this semester if you haven't met me yet. Um, so normally during ecology lecture, we would bring in some sort of plant or animal to pass around so that you could get a hands-on idea of different ecological concepts. Um, but since we're not in the classroom this semester still, I figured that this would be an amazing opportunity to bring you all some of the ecology that's happening all around Tallahassee. So we actually live in one of the world's biodiversity hotspots. So there are a lot of species that thrive in the areas surrounding Tallahassee that are only found here and nowhere else on earth, which I think is pretty incredible. Um, and also as humans, as citizens of this earth, I think that it's really important for us to understand the different lives that are going on in the habitats around us since we share their land, we share our land. Um, and so getting an idea of who your creature neighbors are, what habitats surround the places that you live um, is an important thing to know, especially with habitat destruction and climate change and all of these things threatening us and the biodiversity that surrounds us. So today I am in Sumatra, Florida, or just outside of Sumatra, Florida in the Apalachicola National Forest. Um, so I'm about an hour and a half kind of southwest of Tallahassee. And today I'm in Twisted Cypress Bog named for this lovely Twisted Cypress tree kind of behind me that I'm not sure if you can see. Um, but bogs like Twisted Cypress are areas where the soil is really either completely saturated with water so that it's flooded most of the year um, or the soil just stays really wet. And so Twisted Cypress today has a couple inches of water over the soil, which you'll get a chance to see later. Um, so these areas are super harsh because they're wet all the time. Um, the soils are also nutrient poor, so there's very little available nitrogen for plants to take up. Plants need nitrogen, it's a limiting nutrient, super important. Um, so there's very little nitrogen in the soils and they're also acidic. So the plants that you find growing in bogs are usually very special and only grow in bogs because of the adaptations that they need to have to be able to survive in such a harsh environment. And so one of those kinds of plants that I'm really excited about and that I'm excited to bring to you today are the carnivorous plants. So if you're not familiar with carnivorous plants, um, these are things like Venus fly traps if you've seen those before. But carnivorous plants are plants that eat bugs. So to deal with the lack of nitrogen in the soil, they capture, capture, capture bugs either in pitcher, tra pitcher traps or sticky leaves um, and they digest those bugs to take the nitrogen from their bodies, which is pretty brutal and very cool. So we'll walk around the bog and see if we can find some of those species um, that are living out here. There's a few that I don't know if we'll come into contact with today, um, but that only grow in Apalachicola National Forest and kind of the surrounding areas, which is pretty amazing. So our first carnivorous plant is going to be Saracenia flava or the yellow top pitcher plant or the trumpet pitcher plant, it has a few names. Um, but it attracts insects by both of this yellow or this big red spot here on the pitcher. Um, and then it also secretes nectar around the rim of the plant. And so it lures insects in that come land on the edge of the pitcher plant um, and then because it's kind of slippery with the nectar, they fall right in. Um, and then inside the plant down here, the bugs will get stuck and get digested. Um, and the plant will use their nitrogen to grow and develop. But since these plants attract insects, you find a host of other creatures that wait on the pitcher plants for a meal. So things like spiders and frogs. If you look inside of these plants, you can often see other creatures lying in wait. There's a spider actually on that one that I'll bring the camera in closer for you to see. It's pretty cool. Um, but they attract a whole community of organisms to them looking for food. So there's this little pitcher plant community within a community. Here she is. So this is a green lynx spider. She's waiting for some sort of insect prey to be attracted to the pitcher plant so that she can eat it. Um, and have food to make eggs and have a bunch of babies. Green link spiders are often on pitcher plants. You can see them waiting to catch prey that is flying by. Our next pitcher plant is the parrot top pitcher plant or Saracenia citicina. Um, and that's this one right here. And so it gets its name because the top of the pitcher kind of looks like a parrot's head, kind of. 
Um, and it has its little opening is up underneath the little parrot head of the pitcher plant. And so insects are attracted to these guys who kind of lay in wait on the bog floor. And so they'll attract things like ants and beetles that will crawl in there, um, not realizing that it's a carnivorous plant waiting to eat them, but thinking that there might be food inside. I often see them covered in water. So when the bog is flooded, which it's only somewhat flooded today, there's another species or another um, pear top pitcher plant there. These plants are often submerged, so I wonder if they're eating any aquatic prey. But you can see they're quite abundant all over the floor of the bog. So moving on to our next kind of carnivorous plant, these are the sundews, the drosera. And so they use their paddle-like leaves here that you see that have a bunch of sticky hairs on the end of them to attract bugs. And then once they're attracted to these sticky leaves, they get stuck and digested on the leaves of the sundew. So these are fairly abundant in our bogs. If you ever find yourself in a bog, look down at your feet, you're probably standing on some sundews. These are thread dews, so they're very similar to sundews, um, and they're very sticky and catch bugs on, with these sticky hairs on their modified leaves. So like the, the sundews, they're using that sticky substance to catch bugs to eat. Um, but these guys are typically going after flying prey that may come into contact with their leaves rather than crawling ground prey. Um, like the sundews that we saw earlier, but again, they'll take any kind of bug that comes into contact with their leaves. So this is a pinguicula. This is a butterwort, um, another kind of carnivorous plant. So it's similar to the, the drosera, the sundews, and the threaddews in that it uses a substance that it secretes on its leaves to attract and capture insects. So the butterworts, instead of being sticky, though, have a, a buttery slimy surface on their leaves that they use to catch bugs. And I'm not sure which one this is. So if you feel the leaves, they're very slimy. Um, but I know that Godfrey's butterwort, Pinguicula ionantha, is a species that is endemic. So it's only found in Apalachicola National Forest and the surrounding areas. Um, and this might be that plant. I would need to see it in bloom, but the leaves are this color. So that doesn't mean necessarily that it is that plant but it does live in our bogs. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this introduction to a few of the carnivorous plants that live in Apalachicola near us. Um, if you'd like more information, I'm happy to provide it. I love these areas and I'd love to tell you more about them. They are threatened just like many of our other habitats by human encroachment and then specifically here is um, fire suppression. So these are very fire dependent ecosystems. They need prescribed fires to come through and clear out any brush or trees that may be encroaching on them. Um, bogs will dry up with shrub and tree encroachment. And when that happens, we'll lose our carnivorous plants. Um, so support prescribed fire, get outside, explore your local e ecosystems, and I'll see you next week at another location. Thanks so much.